Hi, this is Nikki from Sunny Day Music Studio, and this video is going to teach you how to learn the notes of the grand staff. Um, this is the first step to learning how to read music, and it's vitally important for anybody who wants to be an instrumentalist to get this down. So, let's get started. This is what we call the grand staff. And the grand staff is comprised of the treble clef and the bass clef. The treble clef contains notes that are um, higher in nature, ones that are above middle C. Um, and the bass clef, like the bass in a band, uh, covers most of the low notes. So you'll see that these clefs have a number of lines. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five lines in the treble clef, marked in green there. One, two, three, four, five lines. And in between those five lines, there are four spaces. You can see those marked in red. One, two, three, four spaces. The bass clef is just the same. It also has five lines and four spaces. Each of these lines and spaces correspond with a different note on the piano. So this first line on the treble clef is the letter E, the first E above middle C. The first space, which is marked in red here, is the next white key on the piano. So we started on E on the line, F is our next note. If we go up to the next line, line two, that is a G. So space two is the next note on the piano. What's the next note after G, the next white key? A. E, F, G, A. B, C, D, E, F. We go in order using the musical alphabet, um, alternating back and forth from line, space, line, space. So on a piano, if you start on E, that's a line, F is a space, G is a line, A is a space, B is a line, C is a space. It goes like that on all of the white keys up and down the piano. So there's definitely a pattern and some order to what we're looking at here. Now, trying to memorize them just by thinking, oh, the third line of the treble clef is a B, and the fourth space of the treble clef is an E is just gonna be a waste of your time. It's gonna be more time consuming than a lot of the tricks that have been developed over time. So let's talk about some of the most common ways that people remember the lines and spaces. Okay, so first off, let me show you the difference between what a line and a space note look like. Um, so here is a great example of a note that's on a line. Um, when I say this is on a line, I'm talking about that oval part of the note, not the stem. Don't look at where the stem starts or ends. It's the note itself that's important. And if you look at this note, you'll see that the line goes right through the middle of it. That's what makes this a note that's on a line, when the line goes right through the middle. Now, notes that are on spaces instead have lines that go either above or below or on both sides of the note. So this is a line that's on a space because there's not, this is a note that's on a space because there's not a line going through it. So spaces and lines. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the spaces of the treble clef. Now the letters of the spaces of the treble clef are F, a, C, and E. Um, F, and then G is the line, so we skip that. A, skip B, C, skip D, E. So you can see it follows along with the piano, just skipping a note. F, A, C, E. Lucky for us, it already spells a word, face. F, A, C, E, face. We always start from the bottom and work our way up when we're remembering these letters. So let's take a look at some of my flash cards. These are the best way to drill notes. You can order them online. I think this set costs like five bucks. Go to a music store and pick them up if you would prefer to do that. These are gonna be really helpful for drilling these notes. So if we think of our word, what's our word? Do you remember? Face. Okay, 
So, remember, start from the bottom. So this is the letter F. Let me see if these, yeah, they're not in order. Okay. Take a stab at this one. Remember, start from the bottom. What's our word? Face. F. A. C. E. Okay, see if you get this one on your own. Did you say A? Hope so. Last one. It's C. F. A. C. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the lines of the treble clef. So there are five lines and there's five letters. The letters are E, G, B, D, F. They don't spell a word. This one's not as easy as face. Ugbidif is <laughs> not a word, unfortunately. So I come up, uh, or people over time, have come up with a bunch of different phrases. This is one of my favorites. So E for elephants, G for get, B big, D dirty, F feet. E, G, B, D, F, elephants get big, dirty feet. Elephants get big, dirty feet. Say it like four or five times in a row. Elephants get big, dirty feet. Elephants get big, dirty feet. It seems silly, but it's going to be so helpful. E, G, B, D, F. Elephants get big, dirty feet. Remember, count from the bottom. Elephants get big, dirty. D. What's this one? G. Remember, start from the bottom. So this would be E for elephants. Uh oh. Let's try this one. B. Last one. Did you say F? F. Okay, great. Okay, so we've done the treble clef. We're halfway through. Let's talk about bass clef. So, bass clef spaces, we're looking at the letters A, C, E, and G. My favorite way to remember this is all cows eat grass. All cows eat grass grass. All cows eat grass. A-C-E-G. Flashcard time. Remember, start from the bottom. Bass clef is the same as treble clef. You always start from the bottom, so all cows. C. How does it start again? All. A. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, how about this one? All cows eat grass. G. Last one. E. Okay. Almost done. Let's talk about the lines of the bass clef. This happens to be my favorite phrase. The letters are G, B, D, F, A. And this phrase corresponds with one of my favorite foods, which is burritos. So, good burritos don't fall apart. Words of wisdom. So true. G, B, D, F, A. Good burritos don't fall apart. Good burritos don't fall apart. Okay. Let's see how you do. Remember, start from the bottom. Good burritos don't fall. F. You tell me. Did you say A? I hope so. Good burritos. B. What kind of burritos don't fall apart? Good burritos don't fall apart. G. Last one. D. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about are a couple pesky notes in the middle of the two staff, uh, the treble and the bass clefs, <laughs> that can be a little tricky. So, right in the middle, we have middle C, which if you've taken any piano at all, you probably are familiar with. Middle C, uh, sometimes people say it looks like a flying saucer. 
it's got um, a line going through it. It's not a full line though. It's just going to be a little line. Let me show you an example. This flashcard shows you what middle C looks like. It doesn't have a full line. It's not part of one of our other phrases. It just has that little ledger line. Um, and the stem can either go up or go down. I don't think I have an example of the stem going down, but the stem can also go down and it can be closer to the bass clef. Both are middle C. Anytime you see a note with a line in between the two staff, the two clefs, it's going to be middle C until you get into some trickier stuff. Middle C. Now, if you look at C on the piano, look up one note, go higher one note, and you'll have D. If you go lower, you'll have B. B, C, D. C is in the middle. One note lower is B. One note higher is D. These don't go along with our other phrases, and they come in the middle, um, and they're, they can be a little tricky to remember. Um, there's not a lot of phrases that go along with this. One of my students came up with big crazy dog, and it's kind of stuck for me. So B, C, D, big crazy dog. Well, let's see if you can recognize these flashcards. So what is this one with the line? Middle C. This one is lower, so our phrase starts with this, B. Last one, D. So those notes come in between the treble clef and the bass clef. They're right smack dab in the middle of the piano. Well, I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to be putting up more videos that uh, give helpful piano tips, so please subscribe to this channel, and thanks for listening to the video. Have a sunny day.